Okay, hi, hello, it's me, McKenna, what's up? Uh, to state the obvious, I am not home right now. I'm in Big Bear, California, to celebrate my brother's birthday with my family. So, welcome to Big Bear. It's beautiful here. I love the mountains. But the fact that I'm in Big Bear isn't the point of this video. The point of this video is that I flipped furniture for profit, and I wanna show you and tell you the little story and timeline and just yeah, everything about flipping furniture for profit that I learned from my first time doing so. One thing I wanna say is that I finally gave in and downloaded TikTok and I decided I would document this whole process on TikTok as well and then I kind of gained a little bit of a following on there. And so if you came from TikTok to this video, hello. And if you haven't seen my TikTok, you can go over there, it's at he, he, it's McKenna. But anyway, let's get into the process of actually flipping the furniture now. About a month or so ago, I randomly decided I want to learn a new hobby that isn't a technical software hobby, like a real life like paint or something hobby. And I was like, oh, I think I'll try to flip furniture for fun. And then I was like, well, I can even try to sell something. And then that night I was talking to my boyfriend about it on the drive back from somewhere. And then there just happened to be this huge Adirondack patio set sitting out on the curb across the street from his house. It was like 11 p.m. I ended up hauling those over to my house, which we live in the same neighborhood. So it wasn't that big a deal. But anyway, just happened like by the fate of whoever decides fate, it just was there. And I was like, okay, obviously this should be my first guinea pig canvas for trying to flip furniture for profit. So I hauled them home, put them on my patio, and then that night I did some research. I, I did some very like minimal research on how to flip furniture. I kind of am bad at researching and retaining information because I kind of am like, well, this seems like common sense, I'll just do this, which might not be a great um, character asset because then I can never fully learn things because I'm too stubborn to actually die in and learn. Anyway, that's beside the point. The next morning, I went to Home Depot and I bought all of the things that I needed to start trying to flip furniture for profit. First and foremost, before we even get to beginning the art project, we have to put on our artsy outfit. That's just a crucial step in the beginning process of doing anything that is artistic whatsoever. First things first, I sanded down each and every piece. I used the circle sander, I used a really rough, um, what do you call it, grit of sandpaper, and I sanded that bad boy down, every single bad boy down, as one does when they flip old furniture, I don't know. It was the first step I saw online to do, so I did it. I definitely could have done a better job sanding down each piece of furniture, but I like ran out of my high, rough grit sandpaper to use, and then I was like, too lazy to go to Home Depot, which I probably shouldn't have been like that, but I thought, okay, for my first time, I'm just gonna see how this goes. There was a love seat as part of this set that I found, but it was too damaged for my skill set of being absolutely nothing to actually go ahead and like flip it, so I just didn't end up flipping that. It's still sitting on my patio. I think I'll just put it on the curb for someone else to take. I don't know yet. So then I called it a night with two hours of work on the first day thinking, dang, I wasn't expecting sanding to take that long, which I shouldn't have thought like that because it takes a long time to flip furniture. It shouldn't be like a this is taking too long kind of thing. It should be like a trust the process. It's gonna take long kind of thing, which is something I learned as from doing this, from flipping furniture. The next day was prime day. I got this primer. It was like an interior and exterior primer, a really high quality, good primer from what I saw for like weatherproofing and mildew resistance or whatever. Someone on an article said that it was the best in the West. So I got it and I went ahead and painted each and every piece of that furniture. So this day of priming only did end up taking about five hours. I was gonna do two coats, but then I was like, I definitely don't have the patience to do two coats of this primer, first of all. Second of all, it's a heavy duty, high quality primer. It should be fine for the job. I did try to use a roller at first, but it definitely didn't work with all the little nooks and crannies of each of the furnitures. I needed to use smaller paint brushes, which is also probably what took me five hours. And then on day three, I got to begin the color. I had this vision in mind the whole time that I wanted them to be kind of fun. I didn't want them to be just like a basic color. I wanted them to have something of like a little unique characteristic to them. So I decided I'd keep one slat of each of the furnitures a different color. And then I'd have the tables be the opposite colors of that color. And then I began painting. I mixed this 
pastelish green color with this darker green because I didn't like the too baby looking of the pastel that I chose. So I mixed them and then I just began painting. I started with the chairs this time because I learned that from the first day of priming, I was very unmotivated by the time I got to the chairs because I started with the tables and I was kind of being like lazy about it and I wanted the chairs to be the best work I had. So I started with the chairs. I did one layer of each of the chairs and then I did the second layer of each of the chairs. Then I moved on to the footstool things. I painted those one layer, second layer, and then I only painted one slat on the table, the green color, because the other color that's going to be the one slat on the other pieces of furniture is going to be the color of that. I don't know, it's confusing, but you'll see when I explain tomorrow. I'm not really sure how the mathematics of this works, but it ended up being about five hours, not ten, five hours for that day as well as the primer day. And then the next day was the final paint day. I decided I wanted the last slat in the tables to be this like vibrant yellow color. It was just like what I envisioned the whole time and I thought that it would be fun and it was my choice and my artistic venture so I went off and I did the yellow color like a mustard yellow which I thought happened to be very fun and quirky and spunky and cute. I painted the tables the full yellow color and then I painted the one slat that was left yellow on both of the chairs and on the footstools and then when I was doing research I saw that you could put sealant on the furniture like a seal on top of the paint but from what I read it was pretty much optional the paint that I had chosen was very high quality and it said it was water resistant and weather resistant so I figured two coats of that paint with the heavy-duty primer was enough maybe in the future I'll use it but for this time I didn't so then the chairs and the tables and the footstools were all painted and the last step was to list the stuff online so I decided to list them onto Facebook marketplace for $500. I know it might sound steep, but this is a pretty big set. I did put about like 20 hours into the labor of this. And then on top of that, I accounted for what I spent at Home Depot. I spent about $225, but obviously I didn't use all the paint. The sander is like reusable. The paintbrushes are reusable. So I probably only really used about a quarter of that money. It was really just kind of a trial and experiment because I've never flipped and sold furniture. So I was like, let's just put $500 see if there's any bites. After like the first week or so, I wasn't getting any hits at all on the listing at $500, so I lowered it to $450, and then I also decided I'd add it to offer up. No bites on either of those, and then I decided to lower it to $400 about like a week after that. Hello? Who's up there? That's me. What's up? I'm filming a video. <laughs> I lowered it to 400 on Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp, and then I found out my listing was expired or something, and it went, like wasn't being shown, so I had to renew my listing. And then I had it up for like a week or something. I don't know, my timeline might be a little off, but then I had it up for like a week or something at 400, and I wasn't getting any bites. And then I was thinking like, dang, I can just keep the set if no one's gonna buy it. I'm fine with having this patio set. It's cute, it's very custom to me. And so I was gonna keep it, and then last night at like 10 p.m., a woman messaged me on Facebook Marketplace saying, is this still available? Can I buy it for $350? And I was just like, sure, that sounds great. When can you come and get it? And then this morning she picked it up and the lady was sweet and she was like, I'm so excited about these chairs. Why are you selling them? Why aren't you keeping them? Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, baby, because I want you to have them. I didn't say that. She probably would have been creeped out. And she gave me $350 cash, baby. So I made out with $350. That's pretty good for my first time flipping for furniture, right? I mean, I got these off the side of the road. They were totally weathered, pretty much just worthless furniture. And then I flipped them to be worth $350. Isn't that cool? You could do this if you wanted. It's very um, straightforward and simple to do. And I'm pretty pumped and excited and I feel very accomplished about this. I wasn't really sure what to expect when it came to actually selling it, but I actually sold it. Why don't people do this more often? So now I am pretty inspired to go ahead and scour the internet for cheap furniture and scour the streets for cheap furniture to try to flip them to sell them because not only is it so therapeutic to paint 
all day long, but also you can make a decent profit off of this. And since I've been bored at home with all the restrictions that are still on in LA due to the circumstances, I have nothing better to do. That's just, I feel like I learned a new thing and a new hobby and a new freelancy fun thing to be able to make some cash from if I need extra cash. I would highly suggest anyone who has any remotely decent painting skills or art skills or just is good at learning to try flipping furniture for profit. Why not? You have access to all of these things to sell furniture. I think Gary Vee would be proud of me right about now. I literally turned junk into $350. That's pretty cool, right? I'm really happy with that entire experience altogether. It went so well. It was fun and relaxing and I feel like I learned a new thing and I... Yeah, I hope that this video can inspire you possibly or just entertain you, if not inspire. And I hope there's more of this to come. Let me know if you liked this. I know this is different than what I usually do on my channel, but I'm so lost in what to post on YouTube anymore that I don't even know what this video really is gonna be. Um, if you haven't already, you can check me out on TikTok. I've been on YouTube four years, give or take, and I have about 1,500 subscribers. I've been on TikTok for like a month and I have like 12,000 followers. I don't know how that app works, but you can check me out on there. This is also like a how to get famous on TikTok video, I guess, on top of how to flip furniture for profit video. I don't know. I never thought I'd succumb to the TikTok uh, trend and addiction, but I'm just as addicted and on the trend as everyone else now. But anyway, that's it. That's all I have to say. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a giant huge thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, please don't give it a thumbs down because, to be honest, thumbs down aren't welcome on this channel. If you came here from TikTok, comment below and let me know you follow me and came here from TikTok. I'd love to know if you're here from that. And subscribe to my channel if you feel like it. Let me know what you want to see from me on this channel. I, I never post anymore. I'm so uninspired to post on this, but I am posting actively on TikTok. If you miss my face on YouTube, you can check me out over there. I'm doing like random little edited fun random food or fashion videos there too. So anyway, I'm feeling very zen and peaceful with this beautiful air quality as well as trees surrounding and just beautiful scenery that I'm going to go enjoy that now. Thanks again for watching. I hope I can inspire someone to maybe try this out. Even if you just flip the furniture to keep for yourself. If you see something that you see potential in on the side of the road sitting there, there's furniture everywhere in LA sitting there like that. Pick it up and do something with it. It's fun. Okay, toodaloo. My lips are extremely dry. I need to go get some chapstick. Here's a cute as heck clip of my boyfriend coming to say hi to me while I was doing my project thing, whatever you call it, while I was flipping the furniture. Bye, love you so much. Thanks again. I hope I didn't miss anything. That was a lot of talking points. Okay, wave, bye. bye. It's not gonna be audio. Bye. That's why I said wave. You can make me say butt or something. Let me give you a kiss.